Hey, we're here for another day. Uh, shuffleboard, building some stuff on the internet is exciting. Um, I have a slightly red eyeball, if that's scaring anybody. I had a contact lens malfunction this morning, but it should be good. Today, I want to talk about uh, product market fit a little bit, because I was thinking about the last video we did, where we walked through like YC's list of things to do in a startup. And the one that was sticking out to me most is like, we're not really doing that is choosing your customers. And I thought about it, um, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with product market fit and finding product market fit in the process of product market fit. So I wanna talk about what product market fit is a little bit, and I just wanna get into like maybe taking some notes for myself about Shuffleboard, about how we're doing in the process of actually getting to that point. So what is product market fit? Well, people talk about things that um, kill startups. Let me pull up a list for you. Things that kill startups. I'm eating Clementines today. 18 mistakes that kill startups under the Paul Graham. I saw like a diagram at one point that had like a chart of all the things. Yeah, that's probably it. Look at the top one. No market need is what it says. No market need. That means basically the number one thing, almost half of startups die because the thing they made, nobody cares. <laughs> it's just not a need for that thing. It, would, it started with like a, wouldn't it be cool if X? And then it turns out, no, not really. And so, you know, if you think about like how to make a company, you could think, what are the things that will make my company succeed? Let's do those things. That's a good idea. Another way to think about it is, what are the things that will make my company fail? And let's figure out how to not do those. <laughs> and so, no market need is the big one, pretty much. And you have to make sure that the thing you have is like a real strong market need, that people will want to buy this, not just because you, like, you know them and convince them. Like It's an evident need that is going to excite people. There's an opportunity or a problem you're solving. That's like a big one. The big one. Ran out of cash. That's one, but we're supporting this project with my normal day job. So probably not as big a deal for us. If we don't over raise money, then it's not as big a deal. Not the right team. It could be a problem for us because the only team is me, but the royal us. Um, but uh, I think that might even be a more complex issue if you have somebody who doesn't know how to write any code or... Um, you hire some people who aren't the right folks, but it's a big risk for us. Get out competed. It's a thing. Not really worried about it. Maybe it should be, but I'm not. Pricing cost issues. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to price your product. I don't know what that is. User unfriendly product. Well, hopefully we can make it pretty friendly because I'm a designer primarily. Product without a business model. It's similar to no market. I mean, all these are related, essentially. Poor marketing, that could be an issue for us. Ignore customers. Ooh, I hope not. We've talked to a few number of customers. I'm going to keep doing that. Product mistimed. Could be likely. We could be too early. We could be too late. I don't really know. Lose focus, definitely a risk. Disharmony, not a risk for us. Pivot gone bad. I just think that's a function of no business model or no product market need, but whatever. Lack passion. Never. We're so passionate. Failed geographical expansion. Failed geographical expansion. All right, we're getting to the bottom of the weird list. We don't need that. What are some other mistakes products make? Single founder. I disagree with, people with this. It's a vote of no confidence. Couldn't talk to anybody who's friends that started a company with them. I'm not going to start my talk to my friends and have them start a company with me that I don't even know works. I'm starting small. By location. James, Paul Graham is not bullish on this project. I think that's changed. When was this article written? Oof. Almost 14 years ago? Actually, I think a lot of these dynamics have changed. Marginal niche. Wow, choosing a small niche. and This is so counter to most startup advice, which says go for niches and then expand. That's very interesting. Derivative idea. I don't even super know what that word means. Hiring bad programmers. Okay, well, notice I'm launching, launching too early. 
Launching too early, but I literally just read an article by Paul Graham that says you should launch immediately in the YC advice. We don't like this article. This is like all over the place. <laughs> well, this might be true for me. Okay. Um, so what is product market fit? I mean, product market fit was founded, or is this term defined by this guy, I think is Andreessen or Horowitz. I forget, it's Mark Andreessen. Basically, what it means is this. The number one predictor of whether or not your startup is gonna succeed is do you have like a product, like a thing that you make that's a good fit for the market that you're selling it to? The reason that it's called product market fit rather than just good product is that it's not about a product or a market, it's about how they fit together. So an example of not product market fit would be somebody saying, oh, I have this awesome thing, it does this really cool thing, it does this, it does that, it does this, it's really dope, wouldn't it be cool if this thing existed, it would be awesome. And you build this awesome thing that exists. Um, maybe it's a good product in some objective sense, but uh, it has no market. A market, and if you want to read about marketing, I think the good intro startup book for this would be Crossing the Chasm. Um, but uh, basically a market is a group of people who are similar, who have some similarity and they talk to each other and it's a specific thing. So, you know, like tech companies who we're kind of targeting right now at this, it's not a market really. A market would be like, um, you know, the uh, small commercial realtors in the Midwest, you know, or... Um, uh, charter schools um, with some defining characteristic who all attend some conference. Like there's a, there, there's specific groups of people with buying power who tend to buy things. So just having a cool product does not give you a market. Now a lot of people might say, who are like talking in businessy speak, they're gonna say, well we want this market, we want that market, this is a good market, oh I love that market, oh finance a great market, or agriculture, interesting market, or um, you know, uh, education, tough market. And they'd basically try to pick a good market to build a business in. And that's not a terrible idea because you want a market that talks to each other, that has purchase power, like I said, um, where there's not a lot of competitors, maybe, stuff like that. The problem with thinking like that is that you haven't actually figured out what you're going to do for them. So you're only thinking about the market. And of course, you could have a cool product and be thinking about this other market. But the, the question really is, do they fit together? Do you have this moment where the people in the market actually want the product and are buying it, and the product is specifically designed to fit the market. You can design the product, you can't design the market. Those are people, those are human beings that exist outside of your sphere of influence. You don't get to control other human people, and you know, hopefully, but they have like these, there's something that's going on with them, and your job is to serve them by creating the product side, and like, you know, adjusting it so it like fits right into the market, and then, you'll have a thing that is something that a specific group of people really want to buy and they'll talk about to each other and it'll get bigger and better. Um, if you can get that, that's a good sign. So getting to product market fit, some people just think like, well, I'll build a good product and there is a market. Well, no, you can't just throw the first two things together and pray. I mean, you can, but it's not really effective. What you kind of got to do is start with an idea or start with the market and then play with who the market might be for the idea or who the product might be for the market. And you kind of just got to work. I mean, like you said, you can't change the market, but you can choose other markets and you kind of got to just jimmy them together and try to get them to, to fit somehow and make sense. And so you can say something like, you know, there's this group of people with this very specific problem and we build this thing that does this, this, this exact thing for them. Um, you know, uh, and product market fit, if you have a really good market, it doesn't really matter how great, you know, a classic example is that Apple generally sells to sort of the upscale computer market. Um, people originally, it was a very specific market of, uh, well, I don't know about originally, but, you know, like in the early 2000s, it was all about people who are creative. Um, um, people who early, originally was like people who were innovative in the computer market and who wanted something simple and awesome, high end. Then it was people who were creative. Now it's just kind of like a luxury product. It's all very specific. Apple doesn't actually own a ton of the total technology market, but they're super profitable because they really nailed that thing. People are passionate about their products. Every successful company has this product market fit uh, at some point in some way. And we do not have it right now. We have a kind of a cool product that does a thing that would be cool, but the people we're talking to um, and trying to like make it work for them in their, their use case 
they're, they're all over the place. They're doing a lot of different things. They're pretty different markets. Um, so I think what I want to get into today a little bit is like starting to map that out and who I know that I could talk to and what market they're in and what features they t seem to be wanting and requesting. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to start with just a basic spreadsheet. Uh, uh, can I do sheets then? Sheets. And I want to play with like some ideas about trying to if we can narrow down doing the exact opposite of what that Paul Graham article just said, which is fine because I don't like that article. I'm trying to narrow down a niche and say this is exactly who I want to target. You can always broaden that niche later, you know. If I get this thing working really well for like certain kinds of agile dev teams, like maybe we can just expand and say, hey, we're making, taking some initiative in the company to move into more design-centered meeting space. So that's, all, that's all good, but better to do that when you have an actual group of people who already care about it and use it and love it. All right, let's pull up our Asana. I Googled how to say that. It sounds like the product is called Asana, even if the origin is Asana. Okay. Well, who have we talked to so far? We've got Jason, Jonah, Becky, Christina. What market are these folks in? I think Jason and Jonah um, are both in a similar thing we'll call design client services, whether it's an agency, let's just say agency. It's kind of the same thing. Like they, they both work with clients. They both perform design work. They're like different roles within that world. Jason's more IC and Jonah's more management. They're doing the same thing though. Becky's, Becky's different. Becky's institution. Excuse me. She's also her role is like a product project management. Let's just say project management because I think the stuff that she's talked about is like part engineering, part project management. This is a leadership thing. I mean, so Christina has done some. I would actually have put her in the designer group originally, but after talking with her, the things that she's talked about doing uh, with her team currently are more in a startup. This isn't, by the way, this isn't like a, a format I've used before or anything. I'm just kind of toying with it. Maybe we should break it out into two things. Organization, agency, agency. Becky, institution. U of M, Christina, startup. The role is design. Design, design. We say PM, leadership. Let's look at some of the other people we wanted to talk to. Design critique, Jason and Kelsey. Let's say Kelsey. Um, David. Let's say Dave Ken. Uh, Luke. Catherine. Ahmad. Luca. Osbo. Matt. Lisa. Lisa? I think I meant to say Liza. Becky, David Claw. Becky. 
Did Jonah... Seen a modern rise, I forgot to put Carson on the list. And um, looking at Kelsey, we should talk to Matt. We'll call him Matt Mac. Um, what are these people's roles? Design, design, design. I'm gonna say it's problem probably primarily engineering. Engineering, design, leadership. Mm, Matt, design or leadership will go design, design, PM. Engineering, but could be design. Oh wait, did I already have a, is that duplicate? Yeah, that's duplicated. Liza design. Mm, interesting. Organization. I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say company, which is like somewhere between startup and institution. U of M is a huge institution. Kelsey works at like an established company. It's not really a startup. Dave Kennedy, this this context would be a startup. Luke will say company. Catherine, company, 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 agency. Um, let's see, uh, what's this say? Um, Ability to buy. And it's really just correlated with what kind of place they work for. Um, like if they, if it's a startup, it's like one dollar sign. Institution. Mm, institution has more dollar signs, but it's harder to get things purchased there, I think. So I don't know. I mean, one thing that's, in, another way to think about this would be interesting is, and I have some shower notes on this, shower thought notes on this too. Ooh, yeah, what did I say? Persona, psycho, demo, etc. There's so different ways to do it. Demo is demographics, but I don't really want to worry about that. Personas, we don't need to deal with a ton. Psychographics is basically just like what's in their brain. Uh, what are the things that influence them mentally when they're making decisions? I think for Jason it was um, like repeat, lower stress, repeatability. When we got heavy on templates and things. Jonah, it was like good, um, smooth client meetings. Becky, it seems to be um, tracking Um, what would we say was her result from our conversation? Kind of like applying, say prioritizing. We haven't done these interviews yet. All right, so what I'm seeing from this is that we got a lot of people who work at companies who we could talk to. 
And this is an incomplete list, obviously. These are just people who I happened to mention this to and kind of semi agreed to do it or who I've reached out to. Um, I think the ideal way to find product market fit would be to figure out like a role and a kind of institution, right? Like this kind of person at this kind of company doing this kind of thing. I think that's our ideal. Let me see what else I put in my notes here. Ingrid, yeah. Ooh. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, Brooke would be good. Brooke Consultants. Pain Frequency. So this is kind of interesting. One thing that people say for product market fit is that people should be using it almost daily. Now, I don't think everything needs to be a daily use product for it to be useful. I kind of reject that. But also, I recognize that if you're trying to have a business that succeeds, like that might be a good idea. So I'm going to say frequency like monthly, maybe, for Jason. Monthly. Becky would be weekly. I'm guessing, because that's how she runs them now, we know that. Luke, I'm guessing would be weekly. So already one pattern I'm seeing here is that I think people who are in design might use this less often. I'm guessing that this is probably going to be monthly, 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 monthly. I'd be curious to know about this weekly. Very interesting. What is their biggest pain point? This is kind of related to goals. I don't know how to fill this out yet, but I want to think about it. Okay, uh, let's talk about these other people. Brooke, leadership at a, we'll call it a small startup. And um, some people who might be interested to talk to about this would be Rick. Um, and let's just say consultant, because I think there's somebody else I might want to chat with. These people are both in leadership. And one's at an agency and one's at a startup. I wonder how often they would do this stuff or if it would be useful to them. I was just say consultant here. This is sort of a general placeholder for people who I think might be, um, who might use this. This list is biased by who I know. Who else do I think would be really effective users of this? Okay, what, one thing might be like teacher. Um, uh, university teachers, people who need to like get um, like ideas from classes who are planning things. Another one might just be, um, uh, let's see, big, what were some of the original concepts we talked about? Um, I mean, who else puts things on board? Like I would say, um, um, I'm really thinking this PM role, this person who's organizing a lot of stuff, because they're doing it, their frequency, I think, might be higher. This might be weekly. Maybe I'm just fixing the data to do what I want. I think I'm wondering if PMs have higher frequency. Then, come, then leadership or not. I think PMs probably have higher frequency than leadership or design. Marketers, that would be a big one. Maybe I can talk to another Kelsey there. Um, Marketer. Um, 
salespeople have, you know, let's just go through like the list of, you know, people who work in tech companies. Sales. Mm. Lots of other people I could talk to about sales. That might be an interesting one. Those are interesting places to explore. person that might be good there would be um, maybe Dan would do it I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not only talking to um, like people who pop into my head first thing and who are in this sort of narrow set of things because look this early list if I just did this early list I'd just be talking to a bunch of designers and that's just because I'm a designer and I know designers I mean, it's not like I know designers every thought. What I mean is I know people who are designers. So I want to start getting a smattering of these different opinions from folks um, uh, to see, like, to test whether or not they'd be interested in purchasing. Um, like, let's see, purchase interest for Jason, we have to figure it out. Jonah was like, well, not the person who buys. He said, yeah, I might purchase this, but we, other people in my company would buy it, which is code for, no, I'm not going to buy it, but other people might. Becky, um, didn't ask. I forgot to ask Christina. Um, yes, if you could rearrange you could um, cards uh, rather if you could read if you could just do more card manipulation in general so I wonder what these other people would think about this product and what would be preventing them from purchasing that would be really interesting because if we could find a group of people who, uh, who like liked the thing had a need, low purchase blockers, high frequency, company that could pay, those would all be good things. Um, I could even maybe like mark this, how do I do uh, conditional formatting? So for these guys I could say if text contains um, startup, make it green. Company make it green. Um, Except startup, we don't think has a lot of ability to pay, so we're going to make that yellow. Design is yellow. I'm not sure it's going to be great. This is our assumption. We're just making some pretty clear assumptions. Engineering would probably be good. I think leadership is like a maybe for now. All right, frequency. Weekly is green. Monthly is yellow. Green got my 
text as well. Oh my god. What is going on? So, according to this, Becky would be a good, likely person to sell to. We didn't try too hard with her. Luke would be good, potentially, based off our assumptions. Carson and Luca would be really good, too. Okay. That's interesting. Let's see, what did I say for my shower thought Yep, yeah, that's enough of that. Let's call this... Um, part of market fit. Maybe Luke should be high on the list. Totally not necessary. But now I have to scroll down. Hmm. I'm glad we put this together. It's gonna make me think a little bit about who else we can test to see what their um, what their interest is. Purchase. I'm gonna call these usage. That's what it really means. Oop. might be interested here. Um, I'm just going to do one more thing. contains low the red yes if yellow so basically We gotta get this column to green. Let's add another one. Nobody said purchased yet. Nobody's bought this yet. Once we get this column in the green, we'll go back to these other attributes, look at maybe some of the things we learned from each of those interviews, try to find patterns, and then probably double down on whatever that is. So sometimes I've heard people talk about it like striking a vein, like you're going out into the, you're mining for gold or something, and you, you dig a little bit here, you dig a little bit there, you dig a little bit there, you dig a little bit there. Hopefully, eventually, you strike a vein and you find a bunch of gold, and then if you find that, you gotta keep digging in that place. So right now, where the product is at, basically, we've got a product, we're looking for some product market fit, 
we don't have any veins that have been struck particularly yet. And so we're gonna see if we can find some. And if we can, then we'll keep digging in that vein and then it'll be useful and maybe this thing will work. If we can't find a vein that is like, not only somebody who's purchasing, but like a pattern of people who purchase, I'm peeling a clementine. If we can't find a pattern of people who purchase, people who are in this um, kind of company, who have this kind of role, uh, who have this kind of need, they all have the similar thing, AKA a market. If we can't find a market, then uh, this thing ain't gonna do so good. But that's okay, because we know sooner than later, we haven't gone and raised a bunch of money. Uh, and um, if we do find a market, then we'll continue working on it on that market as long as it seems to be useful. Okay, how are we doing? 36 minutes? Um, I think I'm gonna take a quick break, get myself sorted. Oh, you know what? You know what else I want to do? Um, I want to go through the other remaining shower thoughts here. So shower thoughts, these are like things that I thought of ooh, um, before the video was recorded uh, that I just wanted to talk about. Denser app view, prompt and sort. Oh, okay, there's some good stuff here. Um, So one thing I wanted to do was pull up that competitors list. And talk about some other things. Competitors and comparators. What's comparator? Uh, it's somebody who's sort of similar. But not exactly the same. Like you wouldn't use them as an alternative necessarily or you shouldn't. So I'm just going to expand this list a little bit to be like simple UI, general purpose, organizing things. Oh, we kind of already have that up there, actually. Well, one that came up in my notes was um, sorry, Googling more alternative. Zapier, it's just in this type form. Those, these are sort of things, um, I'm gonna call them like survey tools. Um, survey tools are things that like capture simple input from people. Maybe UI inspiration? Nah. Um, logic. These are like automation tools. Also automate like flows. Like to the degree that we wanna have automation in here and say like, this is how this meeting works. Uh, I just thought of these two tools that are very similar. They might have some interesting patterns. They might not, honestly. Google we'll more alternatives in SEO. Editors. Comparators. We'll just call it unrelated products because it's so hard to tell the difference between those two. So I'm going to say these are just kind of related. I think these are all relatively competitors, probably competitors. So Google more alternatives and SEO. We actually haven't figured out if anybody's actually doing this already. What would it be like if we were to try to find shuffleboard? What if we said 
pipeboard replacement. These are literally just about whiteboard replacement, like replacing physical whiteboards. Whiteboard replacement app. Microsoft whiteboard, what's that? Canvas for ideas, content, people come together. Jamboard, I should know about this. Purple PM. Whiteboard paint now. Concept board. Ooh, these are interesting. This is a physical device. Very interesting. So it's a virtual whiteboard format. was Google Jamboard? That's cool. Project boards for this document design prototype for more. Um, I don't want this. I'm skeptical. Let's see. Let's online whiteboard. It's another online whiteboard, it looks like. Like they're just, they're just, the use case for that is just annotating images. That's interesting. Is there an actual, like, a... I don't want every, where everybody is on the board. No, that's not... I don't like that. Sharing board, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. This was interesting to me. Is this like a thing we can actually do? Drag and drop things around? All right, I'm gonna say this is just like another virtual meeting, another virtual whiteboard. Unlimited workspace. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah, I think this is just a cool product in search of like a real specific use case. We're specifically focusing on live meetings. Can we get, maybe we can get a better picture of what's going on here. New board. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we'll 
at some of these in more detail at some point, but I don't think this is really useful for us right now. I mean, it's useful. It's it's not a competitor. I don't think it's doing what we're trying to do. Whiteboard. There's just a million of these. One board to rule them all. That's not a good sign. I've not picked a niche. B canvas. Expansive. Crayon. Microsoft Whiteboard. Meet the freeform digital canvas for ideas. Content of people coming together. Who actually draws like stuff like that in a meeting? I've never seen that happen. With a refrigerator, so. we don't use a refrigerator. We would never use a refrigerator in real life. So, you know, why would I want a refrigerator? A virtual refrigerator. Wow, that music. Pretty confident. It's a virtual whiteboard. Yet another virtual whiteboard. So many of these. And I've never used one or wanted to. Purple. Oh yeah, I don't think so. These are the two most interesting to me. Google Jamboard and Microsoft Virtual Whiteboard. Oh, look, we used that picture when we were doing our um, brand stuff. This is some inspiration. Because we like the color, blue and pink. So what's the... And the whiteboard is a space to bring our ideas to life. A Zenberg group. What if we could bring the whiteboard into our digital world and create together in completely new ways? Introducing Microsoft Whiteboard. A new app designed Microsoft to bring the whiteboard. power of the group to life. Image search, Arctic Fox. As an ad agency, Whiteboard allows us to share our ideas from anywhere instantly. It's become a natural extension of how we work today. Digital sticky notes. Draw, type, add an image or a note. Watch your ideas take shape. Ink to shape. 
and take your team's creativity to new heights. Team members draw foxes. Collaborating on whiteboard is pretty seamless. Integration available soon. It kind of feels like there's a flow or an energy where you're just kind of... What are those voices? <laughs> ...playing off of somebody oh, else. Man. You draw something, they draw right next to it. It's like this conversation that's happening visually. Whiteboard together in real time from wherever you are. Collaborate from anywhere. Pick up where someone else left off or start from scratch. When you're done, you're done. Your ideas are safe in the cloud. Save okay, guys. Welcome. I'm just laughing at some of the video things, but you know, this has some elements of what we're trying to do. Like when you draw a circle, it turns into a real circle. They're adding a little bit of structure here. I think that's good. Like this is obviously it's Microsoft. They should be doing a decent Microsoft enough job. Whiteboard. Compared to a startup. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with those closed captions. Something. Digital. Together in completely new way. New app. Anywhere, instantly. It's becoming. Watch your ideas take shape. Collaborating on whiteboard is pretty seamless. Integration of I thought it would be maybe a new category. It does seem to just be a virtual whiteboard. Google Jamboard, this is interesting. Similar, but it's also, also like a hardware thing. Let's see if it's just a virtual whiteboard, if there's something more structured to it. This is Jamboard. It's like a whiteboard, except it's way better. Because it lets this team and this team work together. With this guy who lives in France. Bonjour. On the same thing at the same time. C'est fou. This is how you write. And the race. But you can also do this. And add some of these. And even turn this into this. And it's got all this other stuff. So it's really easy to do this. Unless you're no Michelangelo. In which case you can do this. That's because it's part of G Suite. So you can pull in anything from any of these. Hey guys, I had this room reserved. And this is how you save your work. It saves automatically. Oh right, it's in the cloud. This is how you pick up where you left off. So true. This is how you share your work. So you never have to do this, or write this, so you can do more of this. This is Jamboard, a new way to collaborate from Google. It's still a virtual whiteboard, although it had the better video. Um, what else can we Google to like, speaking to Google, um, meeting game. Meeting phone game. No. Um, I see it might be tough guys because there's kind of doing a new category, sort of. I need just SEO. This is not something we're gonna do right now, but I do wanna build it to it with an eye toward it because it might be a big issue. Um, virtual whiteboard. I don't know if the SEO is going to be a big SEO makes sense for us because because like will people know what to Google? I don't think so. We can get into somebody else's search results. Like it's better than a virtual whiteboard, but um, we need to figure out how to position it. Like, is it a game? 
Is it a tool? It's not a whiteboard. Still working on that marketing stuff, but we don't really need to worry about positioning and SEO until we have some kind of product market fit where we know that somebody actually uses this and likes this and we're still not there. Now what other, I mean, maybe like um, digital sticky notes. I'm curious what that would be. Sticky notes in Google Chrome. Stormboard. We already talked, did we already look at Stormboard? No, that sounds like Shuffleboard. Um, no. Yeah. I feel like we did look at Stormboard. Maybe not. I think it's another virtual whiteboard. Post-it note app? Ooh. What is that? Capture notes. Capture notes. Oh, this is interesting. Group your ideas by thought or simply organize. So you just, it's like a, you just take pictures of the actual post-it notes and create digital notes. That's kind of cool. This is like the probably the most interesting one we found so far today. Kind of interesting. So there's like there is like a digital sticky note. Um, like category, I think. Oh, it's really popular. that Microsoft and Google both have something like this. Google Keep, kind of like this. What is a Mac? Didn't Mac have like virtual sticky notes or does it still? It's just a Mac dashboard. Maybe the biggest difference here 
is like just enough structure to make things productive. Because we all, you know, all have in some way collaborative, um, remote friendly, big screen, live work. This might be the big differentiator. I'm guessing it doesn't work on Mac. Yeah. Sticky note abides. People talk about the virtual sticky note. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand what that a virtual sticky note. It's not sticky notes are solving a certain problem. It doesn't mean that it would be a one-to-one -one mapping. Like sticky notes are still useful. I have them like right here. I'm not gonna get rid of them. These are just video tools. What about meeting tools, just in general? Hit your next meeting out of the park. Maybe meeting agenda. Nope. This might be more relevant to us.
This is actually more similar to what we're doing than other things, if you're actually planning out how you're going to run the meeting. Do. I've heard of do, I think. I guess it's gone. There's a lot of these. That's kind of cool. No. It's not worth presenting a meeting organizer. Like, you don't want to present Yes, there's just a whole list of these, but I don't really, I'm not that interested in any of them. Oof. I guess. It's all pretty funky. Alright, you know what, we're done with that. I want to talk about some of these other items here um, when I get back. But for now, we're going to leave it at this. I think that's as much as we really need. Done. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Hey, I'm back. So today we're talking about um, kind of just this product market fit land and this uh, group of customers we're talking to and, and how we might want to make sure that we're on the right track for this product. Um, 
while I was making myself another cup of tea and stuff, I thought of a couple of the people who might be useful to talk to. Um, one would be maybe Andy or Chris. Um, these are people in engineering. Well, one's in engineering and one's in leadership. And they work for a company. I'd be curious to see if they would be interested in talking about how they use this kind of stuff. Um, another one would be Avery. Avery is very interesting, I think, because she's sort of in this PM-ish space, also works at a company. We haven't really talked to other, we talked to Becky. We need to talk to some engineers, that's the real thing. We haven't even done an engineering test yet. Um, Elaine might be another person to talk to. Marketer at an agency. Uh, M. Um, oh, Zach. Zach popped into my brain. Also, engineer. Engineering a company. Why don't I sort by role? So, our design world, we're a little skeptical of designers, we've talked to a few. And the one was low buying interest, but that's just because he's more of a leadership role. As they said, so interest in a designer, engineering, we need to do some engineering here. We need to talk to some engineers. This is a thing. Um, I do want to talk to some marketers. This stuff is pretty promising. I'm curious about Avery maybe and Luca. Avery I could do in person. Let's call that person pain. See, all the leaders here, we have startup leaders. That's a leader at a company that would be useful. I'm not gonna put that leadership category. I think that makes more sense. It's really about company leadership or not. Um, I mean, let's just leave it as leadership. I think the big question here is engineers.
I'm just thinking. Probably been thinking for a while now, huh? I'm trying to figure out who I want to talk to next. All right, let's send some emails. Uh, first one will be, so I'm probably gonna cut out some of these email bits, like it seems. I'm probably gonna cut out some of this because I'm not gonna show you other people's email addresses, but I will talk out loud as I go. Um, so the first one I'm gonna talk to is Luke and say, hey, um, would you be up for doing a um, remote usability test on Monday uh, tomorrow during our call? So he knows what it is because he's my brother. I told him about the project. And we already have a little call that we already scheduled anyway on Monday. Um, so I'm going to see if he's down. And that's tomorrow. So I'm just going to see if that would work for him. To show one room. I just need on a laptop. Asked him. Let's see. Where's Luke? We're waiting. Um, I'm going to see Chris and Andy Monday. So I'm just going to take a note for myself that just says, um, Dobby is a task manager that I made in use. Talk to Chris and Andy about video test, video interview test. Okay. Avery would be a good person to talk to because she's done this at a couple different places, a company and an agency, and she has a couple different kinds of roles. So let's talk to Avery. Do I have her email? Hello, hope all's well with you. Um, kind of random, but I have an idea for a web project I'm working on, and you'd be an ideal um, um, random. I don't know who. Web project for an idea I'm working on currently in the early stages of, shit, of getting feedback. You'd be an ideal interviewee agency and company experience. Plus, you wear a lot of hats and um, Manage software projects. Would you be open for an? Would you be open to doing a one hour um, interview sometime soon? Um, I'm recording this 
project on YouTube. So I'd ask that. So you'd have to be okay. Uh, appearing on camera. Otherwise, let's grab a coffee or something soon. Haven't talked to her in a while. Hey, hope all's well with you. Kind of random, but I have an idea for a web project I'm working on. Currently in early stages, getting feedback. You'd be an ideal interview for me, um, interviewee for me. Your agency and company experience, plus you wear a lot of hats and manage software projects. Would you be open to doing a one-hour interview slash usability test sometime soon? I'm recording the process of working on this project on YouTube, so you'd have to be okay with appearing on camera. No biggie. I promise. No big production. I promise. By the way, let's grab a coffee or something soon. Cool. Done. David Claw, so I think I did ask, and he was like a possible no. But he could be convinced, potentially. <laughs> All right, we'll start with that because I think if we get a couple insights there, that'll help us figure out where to go next. So I'm gonna put that away. Um, let's see, what are some random other notes we had that we wanna take care of today? Denser app view, I might do some sketching on the app and how I want this thing to work now that I've learned some lessons. Prompt and sort, kind of related. iPad illustration, oh, this is just a note that I don't, if I wanna make the illustrations a little bit unique and I don't wanna use like the same old, same old leaf people, I can just do it on an iPad. And just sketch it out. That's a good, neat thing to use. Um, oh, this is an idea like close people's accounts, only use active accounts or something, but I'm gonna put it at the end because I'm not sure this is useful to do. Journey map would be an interesting thing to work on. That would be a cool like artifact to do. Uh, this last item, am I crazy? I've been wondering if I'm totally insane lately. Uh, and if this is even a good idea, um, that I'm sharing this on YouTube. Um, and so I think the answer to that is just try to get this thing to product market fit. And if it works, if I can get to something useful, then I won't be crazy. And if I give up quickly um, because I can't get product market fit, then I'm not crazy either because I give up on something that wasn't working. So that's how I feel about that. All right, let's do this. Um, Maybe we'll get into a little code and try to clean some stuff up today. I think that would be a good idea. 
Um, maybe just to get things a little bit more sorted for our interviewee subjects. What's on our backlog here? Oh, we did that. This is a good idea eventually, yada, 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 yada. Um, you know, these lists of things here, I'm just gonna say, um, we're gonna remove this because we have this other list, which I think is sufficient. All right, um, I think I'm gonna work on uh, drawing and sketching some ideas for how shuffleboard would work based off of some feedback I got from Christina and Becky. So uh, I'm gonna try to turn this camera around and maybe we can just clean this desk off a little bit and uh, show you what I'm thinking. All right, y'all, this is a view of my desk. And this is a piece of paper that I have in the thing right here. I'm gonna just try sketching out a little bit of an idea I had um, that is sort of related to this denser app view prompt and sort. So right now what we have is something like this. There's like, when you create a template that lives forever, that goes to like a one-time meeting. I know this is messy handwriting, but this is how I would actually probably sketch this by myself. And it works like this. You have steps in this template you can name them. There's a format. And then it goes to the, to the meeting, which is the live version. So something Christina mentioned is that she wants to get like, she wants to ask questions and get the inputs here. And then she wants to sort and group and filter, right? Like there's probably going to be some element of like a Kanban cards in boxes. It's just so common that it's unlikely to not exist. And another format would be quadrants. Super common. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like, what if we did something where like the, we separated out the inputs and the sorting. So like when you were building this template here, you had like a capture stage and a sort group stage. Like maybe one thing that we could do is have these have like, um, like waiting areas. Like when you're doing a, a, a two by two, right? You got your two by two and then you've got your cards waiting to go and be sorted in there. You can do the same thing over here. Um, this idea of capture and sort and group, it's kind of like, like if you were building this template, you'd have like a, a step that says like prompt. You could organize it, right? Prompt. It'd be, it'd be something more like um, prompt. What is your and 
and that would basically be like just one of those collection screens where everybody's ideas are just popping up. And then there might be a separate one called sort or group. I think sort might actually be, you might want to be able to sort them like while you're, hmm, maybe there's a separate like show stage. Cause when you're collecting, you don't actually want to show everybody. Like you might want to just have, like you might want to have a meeting that's like prompt, like collect, 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 and then show and then group or something, you know? Um, I feel like maybe what Christina wants to do, she wants to like collect it. This is like an input and then there's like an output which is something like, um, there's certainly sorting, but there's also, I think grouping is like a separate thing. Group, maybe you could have something like a, it would be like a, a slide that says like, um, col group and columns. Little Kanban icon versus Group in quadrants. So if you're building like a template, you could have like a, I'm imagining like a sidebar in this template builder where you have sets of items. Collect, then do quadrant. And then another one where it's like, collect, sort, quadrant. I can even see like if you were doing the sorting in quadrant, you might not have it be directly tied to this thing. You might have it be anything. So it could just be a long list and say sort, um, You could also categorize it under the, the collection, right? So what if you just had a collection called like what went well? And then it does a couple things. Collect answers. That's supposed to be a little like an arrow in a box. Um show quadrant hmm. so the question is how how important is it that the sorting be tied to the question. Because you could add another filter here, right? Like Christina, this for this her this might work instead of having just like any arbitrary thing here. Because otherwise, this version, you can just put any question, any set of collected responses here you want. You also might want to have pre-built in like Um, items. Like in Christina's meeting, they didn't actually use it for collecting anything. They already had the list of things they wanted to talk about. What they only, all they really wanted to do was a sort. Hmm. I mean, one of the big questions for this too is like templates. Like, is to what degree is this a template? versus a live meeting that just happens. Can I do this in place? Like maybe I can go and I can say in a meeting, I can just start with an empty board and say, give it a title. 
everybody's in the meeting, so they can just start throwing stuff up. And then, you know, maybe when you hit next button, you know, you get an option. Uh, group. You know, you could, you could say group. Quadrant. Uh, or end meeting. Or new question, right? Bad icon. It'd be good to get this thing working sort of on the fly, like let people figure it out as they go. It's very interesting. I wonder how many people would actually do that. Is Christina the only one? Becky seems very template oriented. Mm, interesting. I mean, is sorting really like its whole own thing? Because like, wouldn't you want to be able to sort if you have new incoming items? You'd want to be able to sort as items come in and you talk about them, right? You'd also want to be able to sort here. Because, and sorting is also like, you'd want to sort them in a quadrant probably. I think sorting and grouping are really super different. Grouping, all these different lenses, grouping, filtering maybe. Is filtering really more like grouping or is it more like sorting? Like if you're in a situation, what would the use case for a filter be? Show me only so-and-so's answers. I don't know that filtering is like that useful. Is filtering a step in a meeting? I don't think so. I think filtering is just like a layer. Like I think filtering is a way to answer the question, who asked this or what are the ones we have from this piece? But maybe you could do filters become groups. I, get, I think there's like a question of like, there's a moment where you probably want to manage something live in a meeting. I'm thinking back to my own meetings. Like I want to see cards that are like this, or I want to have incrementally chunked cards that are just related to one topic. That's really like a prompt. Um, And the grouping stuff is like, it just seems different. Mm. Another way you could do this is just say, listen, we're going to keep it like the original thing where it's just a prompt that ha it's like every slide is still just a slide. Where you get a, you have a big board of stuff. And a title. And there's an option here. It just says, um, grouping. You can do none. columns or quadrants. And there's another thing here that says filtering. And then, you know, whatever you have. Sorting is just done on all cards. So like whenever you have cards, you can sort them, just period. That's just not a thing. Um, sizing cards, all the different ways that we would want to like re reorder the content here. Sizing could be really just like um, automatic, really, to just fit whatever the board is, like the sizing, or maybe zoom ability.
I mean, if we just keep it this way, this is kind of where we're at right now. The other options that we had here are like, um, I mean, do we even need templates? Like really templates, you could just make a meeting in advance and run through. Templates are really not that necessary. Yeah, I don't even know if we need those. You should just have like some pre-built meetings. Let me see here. Maybe we're, we have this assumption of templates and building, but really it's not that big a deal. Like you can just do it live. Like our approach is like, do it live. It should be easy anyway, right? If it's not easy to do it live, then we have a problem because we're supporting the live context where things change and meetings are whatever. Later, later, we can worry about automating preset stuff. But we don't even know what to automate yet because we don't even have like an understanding of how these meetings are gonna run. So maybe we should just focus on doing it live, sticking with our template we have right now. It's just a bunch of different pages. You can group and sort and whatever, however you want. Like, you know what, you could solve Christina's use case here where you have multiple things by just saying like copy items, like just like a button that says copy from slide. That would solve this problem really easily of how to copy items from somewhere else. You could just copy from slide or um, paste, you know, like paste from clipboard. That would be, that would be so much easier than this stuff. And then you could just, not, you wouldn't have to separate out this stuff, you know, like, yeah, it's kind of like a whiteboard issue where you don't have the original version, but are you, do you really need to sort and group? Mm, yeah, that seems like an incremental thing to do. Yeah, this is seeming a little bit like futuristic. I don't think we need to worry about this because we can solve the problems that we're trying to solve with this with a much simpler way that is more supportive of live and more of how we already have it. I don't want to over feature this thing. Yeah, templates. I don't even know if we need templates to be honest with you. Like the template thing, this whole thing here is like, this is a template future. If we have templates, then we like, yeah, we need to have this, maybe. But we don't really have that need right now. The need we have is like sorting and grouping in quadrants. I think that should be our big priority. Template one time meeting. Um, yeah, like pulling these things in from like a different world, maybe. We already have these prompt stuff. Like this prompt doesn't even need, we don't need a template prompt. You don't need to build it in advance. You can just build it right away. I think we need to get rid of this template builder entirely for now at least. Okay, this whole idea of like, what if you needed to collect click? What if? Well, we don't have any evidence that this is true, that people actually do it this way. And if it did turn out to be true, you could just use the copy from previous boards. It would be fine. It would be totally fine. You could totally do this. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I'm less enthusiastic about templates. I'm more enthusiastic about grouping and dragging and dropping and sorting and making the live experience good. Right now, it seems like most people will probably run this from their laptop. I haven't seen anybody using these touch screens yet, so it makes sense that we could give them something that they can edit live rather than having like a whole pre-built thing. I mean, the pre-built thing is really the questions and the answer is not like, the template is just a, yeah, I don't really think the template thing makes, I don't think it really matters. Well, this is interesting, okay. I'm just kind of reviewing what I have here. That's surprising. Okay. 
Well, I think that's good enough for now. Interesting. That's going to help us figure out our backlog and how we want to do grouping and sorting and filtering stuff. So we'll put a pause on that for now. Hey, y'all, we're back. So I had some good paper sketches just there. Then I went and got some food, took a break. Um, let's get back into it. This is done. That's what we worked on. So um, let's look at our Asana here. And, and based off what we just sketched out, thinking about what our users are actually asking for, um, what are some good things that we could uh, prioritize here? Now, you might be thinking like, why are we spending so much time prioritizing this backlog list? It's so boring. It is a little boring, but um, I think it's so important to work on the right features and the right order uh, because if you don't work on the right feature, then you're not going to learn the thing you need to learn from the feature. Like you have to work on the thing that's preventing people from getting things done. Also, if we work on a feature and it's not the right one and it makes our thing complicated and hard to use, we really screwed ourselves because not only have we wasted time, we're actually harming the people that um, we're using. So I want to like get things a little bit more sorted so that next time when I'm a little bit fresher, I'm coming into this, I can really start to program and make sure I'm getting the right stuff done. Reordering. I think that's a big one. I think that's soon. This click a button thing is definitely soon. Define, oh, target customer strategy. We did that today. We're working on it at least. Um, this stuff, onboarding welcome video. Yeah, we don't need that right away. It's like a much later thing. Um, maybe before launch. Running when meeting with relative yeah. for board. That is a soon thing. We're going to be talking to some people about that. But that's not ready right now. I guess this is actually ready. These custom templates things. Let's make a new, I'm gonna just play with a new section called like making the app faster. And we'll say the templates are part of this. That's what we're really doing here. The report stuff, this is very ready. It's pretty soon. This is a maybe. Oh, it's so long. these categories we have. Everything's organized around a launch here. I don't think that's really ready anymore because we kind of got to our beta launch, so now I think we should organize it around something else. So these are all things that are directly related to like a big launch marketing event. If we don't have these, these are important that people can do. You know, once we have a launch. This is the launch, this is all growth promotions and PR. Pre-launch is all prep for the launch. So just getting billing and payments ready, improving style issues. These are the specific things we wanna do for growth pre-launch. Making sure there's a chat widget. This is an empty one, apparently. Users can see an onboarding checklist. Move that out of there. Modeling, model, that's after, later. Fun retrospectives. Let's just add that to our competitors list and call it good. Um, yep, 
these are review some more products you've done this now we did that that's good add terms of service okay so these are all good launch related things we don't need to worry about that pre-launch launch post-launch post maybe before launch this stuff we got to figure out which of these things are going to happen when so let a new user run a meeting without signing up definitely a user onboarding thing this is basically all related to, I think, making the app faster, which is like a good thing. But um, once we have, we need a working product market fit thing before we can optimize it. Templates boards can have cards and Kanban. So we're gonna say just boards here because we've just, we decided to remove our templates. Um, facilitators can um, group cards into columns. We'll just say you can group cards. This seems like a pretty big one. This one, I don't know if we actually need to do this. This is like a maybe later thing. Turns out previous slides. I don't, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Soon. Group cards. It's a big one. These templates are totally like a not for right now thing. Let's see a tour modal. You know, I think we've covered that in the on the homepage now and how it works. So I think this is just like a maybe thing. And I'm not even sure templates are something we're going to do. This is easy to do and quick. And it's related to getting value out of this. We want to close the loop. New users see a tour model when starting their first meeting. That's like greasing the wheels again. I'm going to put that in a faster column. Onboarding welcome video. So I'm going to say making the app work. And then we'll make it faster and easier later. There's a thing in programming called like make it, make it work, make it fast, make it beautiful. I think it's in that order. And gives another direction decorations to cards. I, I, this might be fundamental actually, but um, I'm going to worry about it later. Participants can see who else is in a meeting. This is probably um, making things work really well. Design critiques about faster and easier. Read books. That might be about making it work really well. I want to know how what we need to do to make it work really well. Rename org to team. This is like such a low priority. We can always do it later. Read books. Recruit people to give feedback from a two design group. Um, let's just put that in our like other you know. It's just another place we can talk to people, but it's not like a big task we need to worry about right now. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Okay, UX just PMs on Twitter. This is um, growth, like making, getting people to use the app. Actually, let's do that. category here. I think this is sort of related to launch stuff. Um, I'd rather focus on the product right now. How do I get rid of this thing? I don't know. Um, 
completed tasks in this section. Oh man. is so trivial I'm gonna keep it there but it's super trivial what it's called is making it clear what this thing does let's see what we got faster and easier yes that's one yep 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 I didn't create custom templates those are so maybe right now. Yep, this is another faster and easier one. Show progress for recurring meetings. That's for later. I haven't heard anybody else mention that besides Becky. Templates, the whole concept of a template is like a later thing. If ever. These are actually pre-launch, I think. This is something you need to make it work. This, you need to make you need this to make it work. Sure, different colors depending on author. That needs to be there for it to really work. I think. Maybe. This is just pure faster and easier. Show info about a meeting when it's done. It's just faster. You know, there's really a, a new category here, a section called just like delight. I'm gonna put that under delight. I'm also gonna do that for um, gifts, etc. There's a lot of different ways to sort and organize like app features, like con, like a uh, kind of method, etc. Maybe we'll use like a better tool for that later. But for now, we're just gonna focus on this. This is something that needs for we need for this thing to work. Maybe for it to work. Maybe for it to work. Maybe for it to work. So we're, we're focusing on getting this stuff to work really well. And I think there are a few miscellaneous things we could do for code-wise here that need to get done. Just like making it so you can delete cards and basic stuff like that. But um, I think the most important ones are this sort of sorting and grouping stuff. Those will be kind of top of mind for me right now. These are sort of, we'll put like this miscellaneous stuff here, but um, yeah, this is really, this is really important. 
Okay. Um, what do I want to do? I think um, it might be a good idea to just get some copy in on a new homepage, potentially. Because I don't really want to start writing code today, like a ton of real code, because I just know I don't have that much time left, and I want to, um, uh, I don't want to like go deep into that, but I do want to make sure we're getting ready for a good usability test and stuff. So maybe I'll put this stuff aside and just focus on um, some basic code cleanup stuff and maybe the marketing website stuff. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to do. I wanted to mail Becky and message Becky and um, ask her about maybe having a I was just going to say one more bonus question. I'm looking for some volunteers to run a test shuffle board meeting. If you think your team might be up for it, I'd love to um, love to join you for a meeting. No pressure. Zero pressure. Done. Let's spin up our code editor. We're already in here, great. Code messaging on homepage. Okay, let's just throw this stuff in here. We want to make this page as good as we can make it. So we're just going to go with the current working hypothesis. section here.
could be a list item, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. That works. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do the big emoji anymore. Well, maybe. I don't want to copy these illustrations over. This whole video wrapper thing turned out to not be a thing. We don't want to do this anymore. What did we say? Shuffleboard is designed. Well, I'm on YouTube. goes to our marketing layout actually I think
lustig im Emoji hat. Break tags, what was I doing? Lazy. Pretty close. That wasn't too hard. Let's make these like small or something. Um, This is a bad layout idea, but I'm just going to get it started. Um. <laughs>
Hey, that kind of worked. Back to the break tags. No, let's do it for real. There's not anything else there. You know what, let's just manually do this for now. I don't really wanna deal with all this stuff.
There we go. Okay, I'd rather have all this like design stuff in there. I think that'd be better, but I don't want to spend a lot of time doing it. I'd rather have the copyright when we do a test. Um, and also like I haven't paid for any of these, so we might want to redo the designs for these. Anyway, I could put a black and white version in there, but I just, it's not like, actually maybe the one that would be, well, maybe I should just put like a crappy version in. Should I? I don't think so. It's just, I don't want to deal with it right now. As long as the copy's there, then um, we're doing okay. I'm just going to say, um, Update, landing page copy. That's good. Good that we did that. Yep. Yep. Reports include facilitator name and pick. This is like the easiest thing in the world.
I'm going to make this a component um, called something like um, credit badge. It's not a good name. Figure it out later. miscellaneous mm. yeah, it's all this stuff Dope. Um, We did the totally wrong thing. I know I do want this to work like this. Right, okay. This is this. Credit badge. Don't need any of these. Now we're going to add this to the report. See what happens. Great. 
it shows the person who did it and it shows that it was created by Shuffleboard and we should also be able to present it and see the same thing here wonderful let's just take a look real quick what we've done new thing called credit badge great much cleaner here two lines here great okay um Done. Done. Okay. Um, run pretty long here, so I'm going to take a quick break and maybe come back and try to um, tweak a couple of these other ones. Or maybe not. I might be done for the day. I don't know. We'll see.